Hi everyone, this is the follow-up video on genetic algorithms using Abacus and Python. In the previous video, we looked how we use binary encoding and code the variables that we need to solve our particular problem. And then we also looked into how you create the initial population. Uh, so then you can start running your genetic algorithm. And we also looked how to convert back from binary back into the, into the original decimal system. So what I want to do today is the next step. So here we have our new generation of, of digits. And now we're going to do the evaluation of each individual. So this is the part that we already done in Abacus. So actually, most of the code is already done. It's just a matter of uh, you know, making it a little bit more organized so then we don't get lost. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go here to our script. I'm going to minimize this create initial population. And I'm going to minimize this chromosome to data. So those are functions that I already created, but I don't need it for now. So I'm just going to minimize so they are out of the way. Now, if you go here into my other script, the classic name I call this, and let me see if I find it, is define fitness function. Okay, so I'm going to copy this uh, function here, and I'm going to call it differently in this case, but I want you to understand what this means. So defining the fitness function is basically the equivalent of this evaluation of each individual. So what Abacus actually does is calculate a measure of fitness. So if your slab has a lot of displacement, right? It deflects a lot. That means it's not a really good uh, slab. So in this case, we're, we're using displacement as a measure of fitness to evaluate each individual. So usually I call this define fitness function. In this case, I'm just going to call it define calculate displacement. And this usually takes only the variables uh, into this function. So now I know that I'm just going to need my abacus. So this I'm going to select all the way down from the first video and I'm going to tab in. So now this is inside my displacement, uh, calculate displacement uh, function. So I'm happy with that. Then I'm going to need as well this MDB to create a new model. Happy with that. Change directory. That might be tricky. We need to be careful about that. But for now, I know that every time I calculate the displacement, I definitely need a, a new model to be created. So I'm happy with that. Um, one thing, by the way, that I've seen in my previous video is when you use Notepad++, please make sure that you go to Settings, Preferences, and then here in Language, you have that uh, button uh, click, so replace by space. Otherwise, you're going to get really annoying errors because Python works with spaces instead of tabs. So you want, when you press tab, to have this replaced by space, in this case, four spaces. That's fine. Uh, but just make sure that's clicked, otherwise you're going to get lots of problems. So basically, the calculate displacement is good. So what is, this does is starts a new model, runs the model all the way down, and now I just need a few more functions from, from the other models that we've been working on. So I need something that waits for the job completion. So if I go here, do Control F, and I search for wait for completion, here you go. So I have this bit that I'm going to, Paste. So after I create the job, I want to run the job. So this does that. And actually, I need a submit as well. So let me find that. Here you go. So this submits the job. And this next one waits for the completion of the job. So I'm happy with that. And then I have a little print that says job one finished running. So that's good. And then what I need to do is find a way to get the displacements so that um, I get a number that then is used for, uh, for my fitness. So if I remember this correctly, and again, I'm going to copy paste uh, because it's just the fastest way to do it. So if I search here for max, okay, so here we go, max displacement in all directions. So the thing that I need is basically this bit here. So let me copy this save here and then i also need to figure out how to get the odb so the odb is this so this should be actually not too bad already so i start job one which is the right name i wait for the completion then i open the odb that's called job one i just need to make sure i'm in the right folder so then this doesn't uh, create any problems one of the things that you do in in python and abacus that is going to be always uh, important is making your folders organized so then you know exactly where everything is 
so at this specific case, I'm at this GA video folder. So I need to start maybe creating some subfolders, but I'm gonna be hesitant to do this straight away. Yeah, I'm gonna first call this path. That's always useful. So if I do this to be path, and then I change the, the directory to path, then I know, then I can keep this variable for, for the future if I need. What I'm tempted to do is to say, before I even run this. So I need to figure out a way to make the, the current folder correct, but I haven't created the folders yet. So I'm just gonna say current folder is os.getcwr, I think it's like this. No, get something. Okay, it took me a while to find this one. So the current folder will be os.getcwd. So then I know that if I, Put this into the correct folder. I should find this job one ODB there once I run the, the model. So I'm happy with that. And then at the end, the displacements are going to be taken from step one, frames I. So in this case, I only have one frame, so it should be just that. Fill displacements U. So I'm happy with this code. I'm not entirely sure what it does, but I'm happy with taking it. And then the max disps is the max of this in axis zero. So I'm going to again trust what this does. And then I guess they're coming with three different values. So if I want U3, that should be my max displacement in U3. So if I say max U3, that's it. So once I'm done with this, and obviously this needs to be tested, who knows if this is working, but I'm happy just to say I want my max U3 to be returned. Okay, so I'm happy with this. Uh, I think it's time to test it just to make sure I don't bring errors. So I need to create, uh, I might pick up these variables that I had from before. So just to test the model. So if I go here and I say, okay, column coordinates is this. I'm just gonna say, just create a little hack here to say my variables is equal to column coordinates. And then I'm going to run this. So save. And now we'll try to open Abacus and give it a spin. So we have Abacus open. And uh, I'm going to find my GA video uh, script and run it and see how this goes. So while this runs, just as a reminder from what we have in the first video, uh, I just added the submit uh, script. I added a wait for completion. That's why this is already uh, running. Um, I did this current folder, so it's kind of like a hack for now. I might need to change it later. Then this opens the ODB. So this opens the ODB. And if you don't know, ODB just stands for Output Database. So it's basically where all the results are um, stored. And then here, this is the script that I copied. We can have a look to see if it works. So this gets the displacements. And as far as I understand this, bulk data blocks just gets the displacements in all the nodes as as a bulk data block as it says here and then that's why i just do the max disp after with this max function and actually i can see here that i'm getting the absolute ones which is actually what i need so i'm happy with this in general although that's usually what you say before an error of course uh, so if i go to job uh, actually is nothing is running which makes sense because now that i put my Calculate displacement in a um, in a function. This doesn't run anymore unless I ask it to run. So if you remember from a couple of videos before, I said that it's kind of like teaching someone how to make a cup of tea and then not telling them to make a cup of tea. So now we taught Abacus how to calculate displacements, but we didn't say, Abacus, can you please calculate displacements? So I actually want to calculate the displacement for a specific variable called column coordinates. So actually I don't need this part anymore. And now I'm gonna run it. Okay, and now we wait. Okay, so this finished running, which is really good. So I should be able to go to the visualization and look into the results, which are U and U3. So that's exactly what we had from before. So this is nice and nothing crashed, which is also nice. Now, the problem that I have is I forgot to output 
the displacement. So I'm hoping that this is somewhere stored in memory. Otherwise, I need to run it again. That wasn't very smart. Yeah, of course, it's not defined. So I'm going to come here and I say that I want max u3 to be equal to the calculate displacement. So what this will do is the, the return value here is going to go into here. So then I can access it later. So I can actually come here and I say print max u3. So then I can have a look. So I'm going to have to run this again. OK, so let's submit one more time and see you in a minute. OK, so this finished running. And surprise, surprise, I got the wrong answer, which in, in a way it's good because if you don't put the effort with Abacus, there's always some things that will not work. So it's always good to get the errors uh, straight away. So I just need to have a look at my script that obtains the displacement. This didn't crash, which is a sign that there's nothing wrong with the function. I might just have the wrong function. So let me go into disps and then max disps. So if I go back to Abacus, when I type here disps, disps is not defined. Okay, so that's, okay, because it's inside. Okay, so let me get the ODB into memory. Okay, current folder is not defined. Okay, you are correct. So current folder is the current folder, then the ODB. Then we're going to have a look into these disps. Okay, and we can do print disps. So it seems to be a bunch of zeros. So let me just have a quick look. So if we do length of disps, so there's one for each node. So maybe I'm just seeing the first and the last node, but probably not. So, okay, we kind of have to dissect what's going on here. So I'm going to do print. And then we're gonna have a look inside this and I'm gonna just get f here for now. Actually, yes, so if I do field outputs u and I can go and I do dot values, okay, and let's say somewhere in the middle. So if I go here in the middle, I'm gonna try to find a node somewhere. So if I go to common labels, show node labels, so 3071, so that's a, a point more or less in the middle. So I should go and find it at 3070. You always have to subtract one. So this is then. And then if I look at the array, it says 000. So if I go here and I do dot data, just so you guys can see, that says 000. So there's no displacements. So I think the problem is here at the frames. So frame zero is probably the initial, so I need frame one. Here we go. Okay, so that's good to know. So this frame is not zero, is frame one. And you can make a type here. So frame equals zero is the initial step. And then you can say frame equals one is the first uh, fully calculated step. Okay, so you live and learn. So I'm happy with this now. I'm gonna run it one more time. Okay, so I'm done with the running and now I finally got the answer 24.18, which I hope if I go and visualize again, and now I need to remove the numbers and put it in x, y, and I'm going to look at u3. So this is looking good. Let me push this down. So indeed, my maximum, as you can see here in the blue, is 24.18. So this is working fantastically. So the maximum displacement in u3 is captured. It's correct. And it's going to be the fitness uh, for my, my genetic algorithms. So in summary for today, we learned how to use Abacus to evaluate each individual. This is the part where this is very specific to the project you want to do. And if we're being honest, Abacus is much better than what I'm presenting here, right? You can do nonlinear analysis. You can, you can capture all sorts of complicated phenomena. And then you decide what is important for the structure, and that will be your fitness. In this case, we're just using displacement for the sake of of this video but that's it so now abacus tells me what is the displacement for a particular slab with the positions in particular places what we're going to do in the next video is how do we select which are the slabs that are good and which are the slabs that are bad and we're going to get rid of the bad ones and the good ones we're going to make some babies and then this continues that's what we have planned for the future videos i hope this is starting to make more sense now uh, and let me know if there's any questions and if not just have a fantastic day